Hello there! In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into shape layers and the various options that exist within them and the things that you can do with them. So first, I'm going to start by making a new composition that we can work with. I'll also just name this tutorial 1920 by 1080 frame rate of 30. Duration is fine. I'm just going to hit OK. And in the previous tutorial, I mentioned that there are two different ways you can make shape layers. One is by going to our shape tool at the top here, choosing the shape that you would like, and then just clicking and dragging to create it. And the other option is to right click your timeline, go to new shape layer, and then opening this tab up and adding. So I'm going to add a rectangle that we can work with, and I'm going to make our rectangle a little bit bigger. And I'm going to start by adding a stroke to it, which is a border around our rectangle. So we can adjust the stroke settings and color up here, or we can also open up our stroke in our tab here and make the stroke width a little bit thicker. So there are a couple of different options within the actual stroke. First is line cap, and if we open this up, there are three options. There's butt cap, round cap, and projecting cap. And you'll see that on our rectangle, if I change the option, it actually doesn't do anything because we have a rectangle. So to show you what this does, let me make another shape layer. And I'm just going to draw a straight line onto this. So now we have this straight line shape layer here. And if I open up our stroke, and now I change this to round cap, let me unclick. You'll see that the end of this line has gone from being a straight edge to this sort of curved edge we have here. Let me actually make this a little thicker so it'll be easier to see. So this is the butt cap. This is the round cap. And the projecting cap is pretty similar to what it sounds like. It's like a further extended out version of the butt cap. So it reaches out a little further beyond the line. So this is what the line cap is. So I'm just going to delete this. I don't actually know what the line join option does. If anyone knows, please tell me in the comments. I've never used it before. <laughs> so next we're going to move on to dashes. So if you hit the plus sign here next to the dashes, it will add a dash or a gap. And what this does is that now it turns our border that we have, we turns our stroke into a bunch of dashes. And you can then adjust the setting of these dashes so we can make the gap between them a little bit bigger by increasing the stash number, or we can make it smaller. You can also animate it, rotating it around by keyframing the offset. So if I increase the offset here, we can see it looks like our dashes are moving around. So that'll be something fun that you can play with. You can also create more advanced dashes by actually hitting the add button again. So I'm going to hit this add dash button and I'm going to actually hit it twice. And now if I just nudge this, you'll see that now we actually have dashes of multiple different lengths. We have like a thick one and a thin one or a long one and then a narrow one, a narrow one, and then a long one. So you can actually keep adding more and more dashes to create a more sort of complex pattern in your dashes. And I recommend you spend some time playing with this. And if you want to remove the dashes at any point, you can just hit the subtract button to get rid of it. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of our dashes. So next, we're going to look at tapering. So if we open up our tapering tab here, you'll see we have start length, end length, start width, end width, start ease, and end ease. And what this does is that it will make the start and ending points, you can adjust the length and width of them so that they increase or decrease. So if we pull this here and make our start length like 100%, we can see that now our rectangle starts with a thin line that progressively gets thicker. And then you can play around with these numbers to sort of adjust the way that your stroke looks. So next we have wave. Wave is pretty self-explanatory. If we just pull the amount up here, you'll see exactly what I mean. It makes it so that these edges form this sort of wave pattern here. And you can also animate this by keyframing the phase and moving it around. So these are the basic options that we have underneath the stroke. So next, I'm going to talk about the other options that exist within the shape layer under this add tab. So first, we're going to start by talking about groups. So I'm just going to hit add group here. And what this does is that it will create an empty group. And what groups are for is that, for example, let's say I have two shapes in here. I have a rectangle right now, and then I'm also going to add an ellipse. I'm going to add this circle. And right now, the stroke that I have applied here is being applied to both the ellipse path and our rectangle path. So if I adjust anything in the dashes here, it'll apply to both of them. But let's say I want maybe just this outer circle to, be, to have dashes, and I don't want this inner rectangle to have dashes. 
You could alternatively create a bunch of different shape layers and then put your one circle in one shape layer, your rectangle in one shape layer, but you can end up with a lot of layers like this. So if you choose to do this in one layer, what you're gonna need to use are groups. So if let's take our group one here and then I'm going to drag our circle into this and then I will add the stroke into the group as well. And now you can see that the stroke now only applies to this outer circle. And if I make a second group and I can throw the rectangle path in there, now I can add fills or strokes specifically just to this group. So I can go to our group two with our rectangle. Now I can add a fill to this one and it will only affect the other objects inside of that group. So you can use this to make pretty complex shapes in just a single shape layer. So now that we've covered groups, next I'm going to cover, let's see. Next we can take a look at merge paths. So for now I'm just gonna get rid of our groups and then start with two empty shapes again. I'm gonna add a rectangle and I'm gonna add an ellipse. I will make both of these a little bit bigger again. And I'll add a stroke over them. Make the stroke a little bit thicker so we can see. And now I'm going to add merge paths. And what this does is it does quite literally what the name says. It's going to combine the two shapes together. So if we add our merge paths, now we can see that the inner parts of our rectangle have disappeared and our shape has become a single shape. And underneath merge paths, there are a couple different modes. You can do add, or you can do subtract, intersect, and so on. And you can play around with these to try to create more unique shapes. So this is what merge paths is for. So I'm going to delete merge pass for now. And then next there is offset pass. So I'm gonna add offset pass. At the moment, it seems like nothing has really changed, but if we adjust the offset pass, we can see that we can adjust the amount. So it seems to be getting bigger or smaller. We can also add more copies. And what happens is, is that when you adjust the amount together with the copies, you can end up with this kind of repeating pattern in your shape. So you can use this to create some pretty interesting animations, kind of like this sort of thing going on. So this is what Offset Pass is for. And next, let's go into, let's look at Pucker and Bloat. Um, this is a lot to look at, I'm going to delete our ellipse. So the way I like to think about Pucker and Bloat is that it will push in corners and push out everything else. And depending on how you drag this, you can end up with some pretty interesting shapes. So it might be something that you want to play with here and there when working with shapes. Okay. Next, there are a couple more similar ones to Pucker and Bloat. There's like round corners, twist, zigzag. You can play with these on your own time. They are exactly what you think they are. Twist is going to twist the shape. You can adjust the center point. Or zigzag will quite literally add zigzags into your shape. You can make these round as well. So that's something you can play with. But the next important tool in here I want to cover is actually going to be the repeater. And what the repeater does is that it will make copies of your current shape that you have. So I'm going to add a repeater in here. And if we open up our repeater, we're going to see that we have copies, we have offset, and then we have transform. And what the transform is here for, it says, is that what should we do to the next copy? It defaults to a position of 100 in the X in the X axis. So it says, okay, make a new copy 100 pixels over 100 pixels positive in the X axis, and then make that next copy 100 pixels over and so on. So if I move this position and make it more positive, we'll see all of our shapes are gonna move more to the right. I'm gonna make a couple more copies and let's say I will move them over like this. Let's move this shape layer so we can see what's going on. And you can adjust any of the parameters here. So we can do the rotation, so it starts to rotate more over time. The opacity, you can make the scale so that they grow bigger. And this is going to be a great tool that you can use to create pretty complex looking shape animations. So next, we can also actually make a grid by adding a second repeater, and this will repeat the entirety of our current row. So if I add another repeater on top of this, and then I oops, go to the transform, and then let's see, let's increase the position in the x-axis. Now we can end up with this sort of like grid. So you might be able to see kind of where we're going here. Now if I change, let's say, the rotation or the roundness of the original shape, it will change too. Or if I increase the size, it will adjust everything. So this might be something that you can consider using. So that's just about the basics of what repeaters are. So I'm going to delete our repeaters for now. So the last thing I want to cover within our shape layers is going to be this trim pass. 
So I'm going to give us a shape that we can work with again. Add a stroke so we can see what's going on. I'll make the stroke a little bigger and this rectangle a little bigger. And I'm going to go to add trim pass. And anytime you're going to animate like the drawing in of a circle or an animation of a shape, you're going to be using trim pass to animate it. So if you adjust the start position, you can now see that our stroke is moving together with it. And we can now animate our trim pass to have this sort of drawing in animation. So I can start with like nothing and then I can add another keyframe and then set this to zero. And now we have this little drawing animation of our rectangle. There are already a lot of YouTube videos out there and tutorials for how to make like circle bursts or simple shape animations, but I will do a quick demo of how to do one right here so that you can kind of have an idea of how we're going to put all of these things together with our repeater, our shapes, our groups, and our trim pass. So I'm just gonna delete our trim pass and our rectangle. So I'm gonna start by making actually not a shape, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mask tool on top here, this pen tool here. And then I'm going to draw a line while selecting our shape layer. I'm just going to draw a straight line like this. And now what this is going to give us is going to give us the shape one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a repeater to this. I will make six copies. Open up the transform, decrease the position down to zero. And then I will set the rotation to 60 degrees. So now we end up with this sort of, hmm, how do I explain what this shape is? <laughs> this sort of li line, line shape. <laughs> I'll just adjust the scale a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trim pass to animate this. So I will start with the trim pass at maybe 100% and then set this to zero. And then I'm also going to animate the end as well. So I will keyframe the end and then drop this to 100. Sorry, drop this to zero. And now we have this little circle burst animation. Let me, let me actually keyframe this properly. Spread this out a little bit more. Set them to easy ease. Quickly adjust the keyframes in the graph editor. And then we have this sort of burst animation. It's a little bit fast, I definitely could use some modifications here and there. But you can kind of see that now, here's how we utilize the shape layers to create this sort of animation. And now I can keep adding more details to this. So let's say I want to add more to it in a different color. I can add a group and then throw all of this inside of the group. And then I, I can create another group. Let's say, oops, go to contents, create another group. And then I can add, I don't know, let's, let's add an ellipse, let's add a circle. And then I can add a stroke to this. I could add dashes to this. You can do whatever you'd like. I can animate the offset and rotate these dashes like this. Now we can have this sort of simple animation. I can also animate the trim pass as well. Put the start at 100% and then drag this to zero. And you can slowly start creating animations like this, utilizing only shape layers. So because shape layers are such a common part of After Effects and creating any sort of visual, there are a lot of third-party scripts available for making shape layers a little bit more easily, or there are also some pre-generated ones available. I will link a couple options that I know in the description that you might find helpful. Unfortunately, the ones that I can think of off the top of my head are all paid. But they are some useful resources, and of course you can always make the shape layers yourself if you'd like. So that's going to be all for this tutorial. Thanks for checking it out, and good luck with making your shape layers! If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or any content that you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching! See ya!